Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about how to paint trees with wash. Let's get started. First let's talk about the general characteristics of a tree. The most basic one is that trees are bigger at the bottom and they will get smaller and thinner as they grow up. Similarly, tree branches are largest in the middle and they get smaller as they grow outward. A tree will first start it out by growing upward, then it will start branching outward to the side and as the branches get heavier, gravity will pull it down. So that's why you see a lot of tree branches has a downward curve. Therefore, when you are drawing tree branches, avoid drawing straight ones. Instead, try to draw them following an S-curve going up, out, down, and then back up. Another very important part of a tree is its silhouette. Because with just a glance at the silhouette, you can kind of tell what type of tree it is. No matter how much details you put in a tree, if its silhouette doesn't read, it wouldn't work. Let's look at an example. Even though these two trees are painted in a very similar way, the one on the right hand side just doesn't look right. This is because if you look at their silhouette, the left one actually looks like a tree while the right one is more like an umbrella. Which brings me to the first not to do in painting tree is to not think about the silhouette. This is usually the first step in painting tree, and as you can see here, the silhouette of this tree is more like a rectangle, and no matter what I do to it later on, it probably won't look like a tree. So when I paint tree, usually I was starting out by mixing the base color of the tree, and then I'm just putting down the outline of the silhouette. And once I'm happy with the silhouette, I'm just using that base color to fill in the middle part. Not only do you want your silhouette to read as a tree, you also want your audience to be able to tell in general what type of tree that is. Another common mistake that I see a lot is to not knowing where the light and the shadow are and just randomly putting them down all over the place. You definitely want to determine where your light source is and paint your shadow accordingly. In this example, my light source is going to be in the front but to the left side a little bit. So my shadow will be mostly on the right hand side and in the middle of the tree. Also make sure that the shadow and light on your tree trunk matches the one on the leaves. Now after I finish marking down the shadow shape for the tree, I'm mixing a color that's slightly lighter than my base color previously. And I'm going back in to paint some of the leaf texture on the tree. This is very similar to dividing your trees into different sections. Each of them has its own light and shadow, and they all need to match the light source that we decided at the beginning, which is in the front and to the left. And of course we're doing the same thing for the tree trunk, just to keep everything consistent. Now I'm mixing a slightly darker color than my current shadow and it's going in reinforcing some of the darkest part of the shadow area. For the highlight area, if you're doing this wet on dry, you want to wait for your previous layer to dry first. If not, you're going to see the result of what I'm doing here is that my next layer is just kind of transparent and mixing with the previous layer and it just looks all muddy and ugly. Now if you wait for your previous layer to dry first, your next layer will be opaque and sitting on top of the previous layer instead of mixing into it. You also want to build your highlight slowly layer by layer. As you can see here, instead of going straight for a very light pink, I'm slowly making my pink color lighter and lighter by layers. And I'm also waiting for my previous layer to dry before I put down my next one. This will help create a nice transition from dark to light and help your tree look more natural. For the last layer of your highlight, try to not cover everything with that highlight. Instead, just put it down in some small area where the light hits so that they actually stand out instead of blending in with everything. And that's our first tree. And you can use this method to paint pretty much any tree you want. As an example, I'm going to paint this willow tree using the same method. 
So I'm starting out again by blocking in the silhouette of the tree and making sure that the silhouette actually read as a willow tree. For this willow tree, my light sword is going to be on the right hand side instead of the left. So for the shadow part right now, I'm using a dry brush to create the willow tree texture on the left hand side first. And as I move to the right hand side, I'm mixing more yellow to my mixture to make it lighter. I know I say this a lot, but if you're not doing this wet on wet, remember to wait for your previous layer to dry first, especially when you're using a dry brushing technique. I previously made a video on how to layer with wash, so if you're having trouble with that, you can check out that video and let me know if you have any problem or questions. Here, after blocking in generally where the shadow and the light are, I'm going back in with the darker color to reinforce the shadow area, so that there are more contrast in the tree. And we're going to do the same thing for the highlight too. Now when your wash dry, it will dry a different color, so the dark area will dry slightly lighter and the light area will dry slightly darker. So make sure you wait for them to dry first, make your judgement on the color and just repeat this process until you get the contrast you want. And finally, I'm using white to add some of the empty area behind the willow tree. Usually I would use my background color for this, but since my background currently is just the white paper, that's why I'm using the white here. And here are our trees. That's the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope this is helpful, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, or if you have any ideas on what tutorial you want to see next. Other than that, I'll see you all next time.